Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Learning to Play City Skylines with Rygar from Rygar Gaming. Today we're going to carry on building up our city. Um, so we started off with building some basic grids to get our city started. Once we'd done that, when we created our second um, suburb or district, we kind of used more loops and cul-de-sacs to kind of give it a more kind of living look. I guess um, something a bit more interesting than grids. It's just a matter of taste, whatever you prefer. If you like grids, that's awesome. If you like the more loopy with cul de sac kind of design, that's awesome as well. Um, now, we also need to hit the next target. So, we need a population of 11,000 so that we can start building some train stations and cargo train terminals to take a lot of our cargo away, instead of having lots of trucks on the highway um, and our roads. And I, I've come across a new design um, method called a fused grid, which we can uh, use. So I'll just quickly bring up an article um, that I came across quite, quite a few years ago. Um, and it talks about a fused grid. So it's based on this book called Remaking the City Street Grid, a model for urban and suburban development from these authors here. So the person who wrote the article said, in the book, I also learned about an interesting street grid planning model called the fused grid, which I believe community planners and so on um, can use wisely to create a healthy and livable neighborhoods and city districts. The fused grid is a neighborhood and district street layout model that combines geometry of inner city grids, so that's our rectangular blocks that we did at the very beginning, and the geometry of conventional suburbs using loops and cul-de-sacs, which is what we did in our second district. The fusion results in retaining the best characteristics of each of the two geometries and none of their disadvantages, and in, and in enhancing both the functioning and the quality of the neighborhood and district environment. So here's an example of a fused grid kind of model. Um, so basically you can see you've got a huge quadrant here, and then inside that huge quadrant there's four smaller quadrants. And inside each smaller quadrant, there are some local roads with paths and parks that can connect up to. And you can use different styles in each of your different uh, quadrants depending on what you want. So the green areas are kind of like paths and um, parks. Uh, the white areas are the roads. The light yellow areas are the residential zones. And the orange areas is the um, mixed uh, zone model. So in the mixed zone model you have a mixture of commercial and uh, not industrial, commercial and office areas. So that's, that means that the places that people can get jobs is right next to these residential um, areas which is pretty awesome. Cool. Um, what the fuse grid accomplishes, so what does it actually give us? It gives us optimize, uh, optimize the use of land for streets, Secure, tranquil, and safe neighborhoods because there's less traffic going through all the roads. If you look back at here, no one's going to be going into these cul de sac roads unless they need to, right? They can take the main collector roads over here, and maybe we can have big arterial roads going up and down through them as well. So that means that in the actual areas where people tend to live, there's less traffic going through them and there's more paths and things for people to walk around them. So that's the main benefits of using a fruit grid. So this is an actual thing for actual cities in real life, not just specifically for um, city skylines. So I thought this, this is an interesting model and I really thought I'd like to try this out. Um, and we can have a go in our city and kind of see what it looks like. So we're going to build our own fused grid system in our city in a new uh, district area. Cool, so um, what I've done is I've bought this tile over here to give us access to the rail network and its junction when we need to. I've bought this tile here to allow us to build up our fused grid. And I've just shifted the highway a little bit just to give us enough room for sticking in our fuse grid. So we're going to put a fuse grid on this side and a fuse grid on this side. So that way um, we can have two fuse grids next to each other, which is kind of cool. And then we've got our roundabout to give us access to the highway. Okay, so I've got this little area here that gives us um, access to the roundabout. Um, so people that want to go to the left side fuse grid, they can take this area. People that want to go to the right size fuse grid can take this area, and then we're going to have a road which branches off. Alright, so let's go through and create our fused grid. So basically we want a, a big 
big, uh, big square for our uh, fuse grid. So I'm going to make it 60 units wide, but when you're building it, you could make it whatever you want. Um, you don't want it too small, but you can basically choose whatever it is that you wish for your size. You can make it extremely big or a bit smaller, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to go for a 60 unit fuse grid, so 60 units. Then we'll go 60 units up. And then 60 units along. And if we come back to here, it should line up perfectly with that, and it does. Awesome. All right, so that's our big fuse grid. So we're using uh, four lane roads, so two lanes each way. So that means that the traffic will flow really nicely. And then we want to collect a road through the middle um, in each direction as well. So it needs to be in the middle there. So does that kind of look like the middle? Should be. We can just check that by going 30 units up. Sometimes it's good just to put a guide in. And then we can delete that. Sweet. And then we want to go through the middle of here, which is probably this one here. Oh, not quite. Uh, that doesn't quite line up properly. That's interesting. So let's go 30 units in this direction. Bring it out to there. Cool, and then we can put a road up through there. Awesome. So I've got a completely flat terrain because I um, lowered the terrain using the terrain tool uh, previously. So you can use the uh, level terrain. If you right click, so we can just reduce the brush size a bit. If you right click, that sets the level. And then as you paint with the left, it makes everything that particular level. So that way everything is nice and flat. And you can just go around and make sure that it is. We'll kind of smooth all this out later on or remove it entirely once we've um, done the rest of that. So I did a recording on how to use the vanilla landscaping tools and also how to use the extra landscaping uh, tool mod as well. So you can check those out on one of the previous episodes. All right, so we're using some nice roads because we want this to be a nice area for people to live in um, so that it looks nice, got nice trees going through there, which is kind of cool. All right, so we've got our four smaller quadrants inside our big fuse grid here. And so we want to put in some uh, local roads. So we want to use two lanes, um, one lane each way for the local road, and we use it with trees. Only problem is you don't kind of get parking with uh, roads with trees. So if that's a problem for you, then you can use the, the vanilla one if you really want to. So this should be 15 units. Sometimes the um, guides just don't line up correctly, so you have to do a little bit of uh, mucking around just to get it to where you want. And then that can go straight up there. And then we want 15 units. Like that. Cool. So um, our local roads are only connecting to these collector roads here on either side so that's really cool now for the middle because we've got four junctions uh, four roads coming into a junction here that might end up being quite busy so it's probably a good idea to create a little roundabout here so you could build it manually yourself but remember we covered using the roundabout tool mod um, in one of the previous episodes so if you want to learn how to do that check out one of my previous episodes you'll have to look in the description it'll tell you uh, which episode has the roundabout tool mod in it so if we choose that because there's only two lanes coming in to the roundabout, probably a two lane road will be fine. We can always upgrade it to three lanes later on. Probably don't want it to be too small. Um, so it could be this size or that size. Let's go for this size. We can always change it later on if we find it's not, not big enough. So we'll click and that creates that for us. We'll fix up all the traffic manager mod stuff later on. Cool. And then we can just keep our roads going through the other quadrants as well. Units. All 
Awesome. And there we go. So now we have our fused grid with little quadrants inside it. And then you could make whatever patterns you want. In fact, in this in this quadrant here, you could you, you might not want to have these roads. You might have you want you might want to have a completely different way of doing it. That's entirely up to you. You can play around. You can just do some sketches on paper. Um, that way you don't have to spend too much time building and rebuilding and stuff. It's pretty easy to sketch things out. So let's put in. So if you look at our roads again, you see there's little gaps in the middle here. So we can kind of fill those up um, with some um, roads as well. I did that slightly wrong, didn't I? Don't want that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And I want to bring this out this way. So I don't, I don't want to go all the way up to here, because if you do it to here, it leaves a little of a gap, and then we can put some pedestrian crossings and things in. So just up to there. Cool, and then bring that up to there. Why is that not lining up? Line up you. There we go. Sweet. Alright, so that gives us the cul-de-sac in here, as well as the gridded layout um, that we talked about before. So just want to kind of replicate that on this side as well. So I don't want that there. So that means there's not too many along here, which is good. So we want to go there to there. There to there, same this way, cool, and then do the same thing on this side. So you could use different patterns in each of these, or can keep them the same and give it kind of a symmetrical look. It's entirely up to you, whatever you think might be good for you. There's, as I said, there's no right or wrong way to play this game. You can do it whichever way you prefer. Now it's not lining up. Turn the road guidelines off, maybe. Yeah. I think that's gone too far, isn't it? Looks longer than the other side. So that was 8U. That's 8U, yeah. It's 8 units. Across there. Sweet. Does those look good? Is that eight units? No, that's nine units. That's too far. Let me do that. So sometimes it's good to turn off the road guidelines. Just make sure you line things up nicer. Is that eight units? Yep. Is that eight units? Yes. Cool. So eight units. There we go. So we have kind of a nice symmetrical pattern. So it depends on if you like that or not, or you can just change it all up and make it completely different if you want to. All right, so there's our first fused grid. Now, um, the only problem is if people want to walk, then um, they have to walk quite a long distance. So if I'm living in a house over here, I have to go all the way around here to get to a particular road. So this is where the paths come in in our fused grid. So we're gonna make paths kind of go everywhere all right so what we want is we want a path to go there and a path to go to there cool and then we can do a path there so it leaves a nice four by four square for a nice house to be built there so a path to go there so just want to go all the directions we could use the automatic pedestrian builder mod that we talked about in the previous episode but it won't um, give you exactly what we're looking for, so that's why I'm not using that. So there we go, we've put in all the paths, so now there's plenty of spaces for people to walk, 
we'll put in um, a nice bus route so that people can get onto buses very easily and they can walk to the bus stops very easily from wherever they are so uh, that's really cool now because um, this road here leads into where our um, roundabout is to get onto the highway we really want to upgrade this road and probably to a six lane road so let's do that luckily the six lane road width is pretty much exactly the same sweet and then we just need to fix up all the traffic manager stuff uh, which we're going to do in a minute all right so there we go there's our fuse grid does that not look awesome i mean look at that wouldn't you want to live in a house in this particular area we can put in cool parks in there's plenty of spaces for people to walk to where they need to get to oh, that just looks really beautiful um, so that's uh, my implementation of a fuse grid and then when we need to build another grid we can just put it next door to it and we can have more shops and things um, along the side here right so what we will do is we'll just use the pick mod if I use the pick mod here bring that up to there, connect that to there, and then we can have shops and things along the middle here, we can have shops coming along the bottom here as well, which is awesome, so it just gives places for people to work. Now you'll notice I've left a gap um, up here, now the reason I've got a gap here is that we want to allow for a train track to come through, because I'm going to put a train station in here somewhere, right, so at the moment you remember we connected our areas using Metro, but this is across the other side of the river. You can have a metro which comes out of the ground, so it can go over ground and you, have, you can create a bridge to go across. But um, once we have a lot of people living in this area, the metro probably isn't going to cut it. So we could use a, a rail system and that will allow us to um, see how we can put rails, uh, a rail system into our city as well. So that's why I've left the gap in there uh, to allow for that. So at the moment, if people want to work, um, in the industry area they're going to have to take the highway and connect up to there so once we get the our rail um, once we hit the next target and get access to rail we will fix that up okay sweet so what we need to do now is put some zoning in and let's see our grid start to take life okay so um, depends how you want to do it what we could do is um, have all of this area here So we could use this area here as commercial. Now you notice it's a little, it's not nice squares. There's, there's probably something to do with the terrain or something. I mean, it's completely flat. So I have no idea why it's gone like that, um, which is a bit weird. So I mean, that should be a nice four block there, right? It shouldn't be like that. So anyway, I'm not too sure why that's happened, but I guess it will give us some interesting shape buildings as well. So that doesn't really... It's not going to really be, be too much of a problem. So remember with light commercial, low density commercial, it doesn't produce much sound. If you use high density commercial, that will actually produce a lot of sound. You don't want high density commercial next door to your residential area. So high density commercial can go in here. Uh, we could also put um, offices here because offices don't produce a huge amount of sound, um, which is good. So let's just try putting... Um, low density commercial here and then we can see what it looks like so then what we want to do is um, just fill in all of this with residential whoops why is that going like that oh, let's use the paintbrush tool all right we are going to need to put in some uh, services like uh, fire engines, police stations, that kind of stuff. So they could go out here on the collector roads as well. Uh, we'll just see. So let's fill in this area here. Let's just do that for now and kind of see how that builds up. All right, let's see what happens. Let's put on full speed. Which is awesome.
awesome. That's good. Right, we've got starting to see people move in. Excellent, excellent. So we still have need for commercial. Um, and I think actually we've built up all the commercial area in here, which is really cool. Um, oh, I forgot to set the district bugger. Oh, that's okay. We'll do the we'll we'll change the building style in our next fuse grid just to make it look a little bit different. All right, we better put some services in. So let's put in because uh, at the moment there's a fire. It'll take a while for the cars to get in. So let's put a fire place here. And we want uh, police. We need a school in our fused grid to make it easy. So somewhere nice, maybe in this corner over here. Yeah, that's a nice place to have a school. So that's a primary school. Probably, do we need a high school yet? We've got plenty of capacity, but it probably makes sense to have a high school um, for our fused grid area. So let's grab a high school here. And oh, maybe out here would be kind of cool. Actually, well, we can move it later if we have to. Just thinking about the train tracks coming into the train station. Mm, maybe not there. Let's put it on. The, oh, it actually jumped out a bit. It's a bit bigger than what I wanted. Um. Is that a good place to put it? No, no, that's not a good place to put it. Oh well, I think we will put it here. And in fact, I want to move this. Let's use the move it mod. Bring it into the middle here. Because I want to have a road to connect to this side. Let's use our picker mod. We want that road. Go across there. So when we build our other fused grid, um, that will allow us to do that. Awesome. So you, see, you can see it's building up nicely. Plenty of paths for people to walk around the fused grid which is excellent um, and so it's starting to be built up awesome all right so that's the beginnings of our fused grid in the next episode we will build uh, keep building it up and then build on the other side and once we hit our target of 11,000 people um, we will uh, then start to put in our train tracks and train stations all right, well, that's it from me. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you're welcome to give it a thumbs down. If you have any comments to make on the Fuse Grid system, um, got any things where you think we could improve it, let me know. Um, otherwise, if you like my content, please give me a subscription. It just helps um, YouTube algorithm to get my videos noticed by other people, which would be awesome. And hopefully I will catch you in the next episode.